Welcome newcomers to the immersive and mind-blowing puzzle world of Cyrano Story. This permanent alternate reality game created by Allison Smith is a short and complex adaptation of the transmedia ARG experience that took place in 2019 during the launch of Funcom's cosmic horror game, Moons of Madness. To thank devoted fans and help upcoming Moons of Madness players get in the mood for horrific otherworldly missions, our team has adapted the Cyrano story game and made it accessible for all right here for free. To get started, simply click on your first moon Analyze the given visual clues, find links between them, and give it your best guess. Write your answer anywhere in the darkness, and wait for a response from the entity. You can speak with this invisible force as many times as you'd like. You'll know you've broken a seal when one of Dr. Olivia Mason's transmissions has been unlocked. Keep in mind that most of these puzzles were originally designed to be solved by entire online communities. In fact, we would be stunned if anyone would be able to complete this ARG without opening at least a few hundred browser tabs. So, feel free to reach out to the Cyrano Story community on Discord for clues or take a look at the various ARG collectives by clicking on resources below. Whatever you make your experience out to be, shoot for the moon. This is a challenging game and we hope you have fun playing it. Dr. Olivia Mason, September 5th, 2019. Personal log number 47. I've had trouble sleeping again. There's a voice that... Everyone is stressing the importance of regular rest, given my illness. I'm quarantined for the foreseeable future, maybe until the end of the trip. I can't abide idle time. I can't just stare at the ceiling. So I've taken on a side project. <laughs> Call it cutting edge. Call it crazy. But if I can advance it, that might buy me back some goodwill with the company. The rest of the crew doesn't know what I'm up to. I'm sure they don't care. And... Nev report submitted. The company doesn't concern itself with the human touch. 
They have alarms for every type of report or inspection. At first, it's just annoying, but after nine months in, every alarm is like sandpaper on your nerve endings. I mean, I would think it was a psychological experiment by the company, if I didn't know better. Arigato Trevisan. I am sure we never could remember without... Fuck! You, things you don't think about when you daydream of space travel as a kid, lack of privacy, and just how much professional astronauts can get on each other's nerves when crammed into a vessel. It's the last leg of this long journey, and I mean, we're bound to get snippy with each other. We were even prepped for that in workshops, but I, uh, I've been getting static from them for a while. None of them believe me. They whisper hypochondriac to each other. And it doesn't matter what they believe. The quarantine protocols are stringent and clear. If a crew member suspects they are sick, quarantine is enforced, regardless of the probability. They have to go through the motions, and that just makes them angrier. I'm pretty sure they think I'm making it up. I thought it would be the company that came down on me for this, but... They remain cordial. They poke and prod me with test after test. They keep pawing me with medical questionnaires that rival the 100-page NDA that got me up here. Mom, Dad, if you listen to some redacted version of this someday, I'm sorry I told you that I was in an undersea lab in the Mariana Trench. (laughs) Test after test comes up negative. They say they can't find any physiological ailment, but, I mean, they will, they've got to. Something is wrong, I can feel it. But I'm more than this illness. This side project of mine, I'm near a breakthrough. If I can just... (sighs) My body wants to sleep, but my mind is adamant about staying awake. I can still remember that dream. Darkness. Someone keeps repeating something. It's... Ah, damn. It's just on the tip of my tongue, you know? Good night, Mars. See you soon. Dr. Olivia Mason, navigation specialist of the Cyrano, signing off.
Dr. Olivia Mason, September 9th, 2019, personal log number 54. <laughs> okay, so sleep is still a little elusive. Uh, that said, I'll always take this frenzy of a new theory than simple, unimaginative dreams. Although, not that my dreams have really been simple much lately. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm on a ship hurtling through Mars on a mission my clandestine corporation is keeping a secret from the rest of Earth. That should be the dream, right? <laughs> right? But this other project, oh my god, I haven't told any of the others. I, I can't, they'd laugh at me. I couldn't blame them, it's so far out there. Okay, so um, I dug through the company's archives, everything that they have for the work of Dr. Newhart. She's something of a mathematics superstar. I mean, she's a bit infamous on account of her theories turning really strange at the end uh, and having some kind of nervous breakdown and vanishing from her family years ago. Full disclosure, I was a bit of a fan. I read all of her books, including The Impossible Angles and Spaces Between the Wall of Sleep. The company tried to hire her for years and she always turned them down. And I know how frighteningly persuasive the company can be, but she still turned them down. More power to her. But these archives, my god, they have work she never published. I mean, most of it's incomplete, but how did they even get this? It's this grand patchwork of theories from Planck, uh, Heisenberg, Riemannian, Sir Arthur Stanley Eddington, as well as the notes of less reputable sorts, it hints at cracking the code of the geometry and curvature of space, like unlocking the higher dimensions of non-Euclidean reality, <laughs> bending space, folding space, finding shortcuts in between. I know, like I said, it's way out there, but just a few hours ago, I made a link me. I solved a bit of the equation the rest of them were stuck on. It's like inspiration struck. It's, it's unlocked something in my head and my mind is moving faster than my hands can take notes. I think all of this might actually work. I mean, we're still light years from all that, but I'm closing the gap. <laughs> I might never sleep again. <laughs> God, I, I can't tell anyone. But once I get this down solidly, the company is going to salivate for it. This could change everything. It won't matter if they think I'm crazy, if they also think I'm a genius. <laughs> uh, Dr. Olivia Meisen, Navigation Specialist of the Cyrano, signing off.
It's Olivia. It's October the 15th. Personal log number. Whatever. No sleep. They threw me a birthday party. It was awkward. Forced smiles all around. I made pleasantries through the door, but mostly I just listened as they spoke to each other in a language I couldn't understand. There were moments, though, that I felt that I was beginning to recognize some of it, maybe. I don't really believe that, but I can't stop half hearing these words as something familiar. Ugh. I need to rest. My head feels fuzzy. I keep bumping into things and knocking all my papers over. But I want to focus on my work. Let me tell you a story, or a fascinating tidbit to get myself drowsy. So recently, back on Earth, some scientists experimented on chicken embryos. They blocked the proteins of two genes active in the formation of the chicken's face. You know what happened? <laughs> Instead of a beak, the chicken embryos grew mouths with teeth like a dinosaur. It's a different way to look at what we inherit from everything that came before. I mean, it never goes away. It's only hidden there. It's like covered over. It's the secret language of our DNA. We're just books inside of a haunted library of ring things. <laughs> we are filled to bursting with gills and claws and fins and tentacles all of it ready to surge out of us, only held back by the thinnest scrim of a couple of proteins. <laughs> it makes me wonder what is being held back by seemingly greater things than ourselves. If a carbon-based life form can be hiding all of this within the DNA, an individual's immortal cell could expand indefinitely with sufficient provocation. I believe this map holds the key. What else can I bless you with? What other captivating note can I leave this on? Well, I'm further down the rabbit hole now, past Newhart's unpublished notes, into supposed fragments of the Narcotic Manuscripts, the Book of Eben, even the incomprehensible equations that were scratched into the cell walls of a witch who vanished from the Salem trials. I'm so close. This sequence in our blood is a melody 
It's radiating from a light that I'm trying to free. It's a source of power and a portal into the past. It's just like our DNA. I can't quite hear it yet, but I know that this part of us is because of it. I'm, I'm going to crack this. Then the company will have to recognize me. They can't stop this. They won't hide my work within their files away from the world. They can't stop me. This is, um, this is me, Olivia, on the Cyrano signing off. Time after time is nothingness. You'll be one step closer to knowledge if you ascend outside of its realms. The merge is inevitable. This is not a dream. See the path that leads to the abyss.
giants. Dr. Olivia Mason, personal log. Time feels meaningless. I've changed the flight coordinates and we move closer to the moons each day, yet the only sign of time moving forward is my own deterioration. I expected kickback from the crew, from the company, but everyone's a go. Despite my illness, they still trust me and will thank me later. My headphones, however, they were less than thrilled. They have been hissing at me. A voice is there. It's hidden within the static and it's buzzing. A warped voice is present. It's trying to warn me of something and it's, it's different from the voices that come to me when I'm forced to rest from exhaustion. No, this is different. The buzzing voice is trying to make me stop. It's causing d debilitating migraines. They are so severe that my nose starts to bleed. But I've put my headphones away now, so it can't get to me. You know, it's probably nothing. Uh, I'm probably just stressing myself out with how close I am to it. The voice is probably just my headphones somehow picking up the crew, uh, speaking to each other, and I'm just looking for something that I can recognize within it. A sort of audio pareidolia. <laughs> I'm so close. The work opens an event horizon in my head. It devours ignorance. Space is relative. Everything is connected in a perfect void. We're way past the Tealing Us theorem. The other dimensions are not so very other. We are not alien to them. The human brain contains vestigial structures, sensory organs that could detect these higher dimensions. They're not distant places. They might be an arm's length away, just in a direction that we have no word for and cannot truly comprehend. We might have vestigial organs, whole vestigial extremities in parallel places that we cannot even sense. We might be vast organisms. What were we? If one were to understand the secret geometries, one could reach out a hand and directly touch another person across the room, across an entire football field. I could reach inside and pull out an organ, dripping, palpitating, without leaving so much as an incision. You have to reach in a direction that's like diagonal, but not. The voice that whispers to me while I rest, it's very crafty. It's learned to mimic the voice of my conscience. It's interjecting into my own internal monologue. I fear how it may manifest in my thoughts. How much are they truly my own? I think the company knew about all of this. I think they let me find those files to set all of these events in motion. I think the Cyrano has a purpose beyond the crew's known mandate. I think they wanted me to be the only lab rat who can see the maze from above. 
Dr. Olivia Mason, navigation specialist of the Ship of Fools, signing off. the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge or luster or name. Hey, shh, shh it's all right. Remember, seven and nine, down the onyx steps. That's it. We're getting closer to the moons. We have to be close when the moment comes. But not this close! You sick fucks. My private thoughts. 
Is my work an attainment to you? All you filthy little voyeurs. Do you feel clever because you managed to catch my signal and listen to my sufferings? Leeches! And to what end? Do you... Do you think that there's some kind of connection between us to the moon and star, to the spaces of my mind, or the... Something is wrong. I can't hear the voices anymore. I just hear the noises of the ship going on like a ghost. Am I dead? <laughs> No, no, I can't believe it. I've been doing work that will change reality for our species. You've, you've been drawn in by something that is happening to me that I don't understand. Why is this happening? I don't think I did this. And I still can't hear them. I am so alone, except for you absentees. I can't hear them, but I think I'll hear her when I sleep. I wake into that horrible sound clawing into my core while I fall into the black red muck! <laughs> oh. <laughs> shut up! 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 <laughs> I solved forbidden equations. Equations that broke the minds of renowned men. I made sense of Gilman's indecipherable scribbling. I reached past the last curved rim of space, past blasphemous infinity. I unraveled the terrible cosmic narrative. I pored over myth cycles that predate humanity, read all the impossible names in the hideous contexts. I shake off the shekels of natural law. I'm the opener of the way. I part the veil. I draw back the curtain on nameless eons and inconceivable dimensions of elder, outer entity. I see them in the spaces between, reaching out to me with hands that are not hands. I have seen the face of God, and it is terrible. Oh, the rest of you, you're all complicit in this, but you can make it right, since I have an audience. I want you to recite something, all of you. Record it, spread it, and your voices will reach me through means not wholly known. This is important. Are you ready? Repeat this phrase after me. Seven and nine, down the onyx steps. Seven and nine, down the onyx steps. There will come a time when I see you, but you won't see me. This is me. I am nothing. Nothing exists save empty space. And you, and you are but a dream. Signing off.
does the face of God look like? The oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. This is likely the last personal log of Olivia Mason. The date? Uh, I'm here, within the planet's gravitational field. <sighs> After an infinitely long journey. <sighs> and I'll never even walk on the surface. Yon flegeth, go karo wa kedishtoi. I've spent my life in the pursuit of science and wonder. The unexplored and the unexpected. But with each new discovery came nothing that wasn't already present. The suspiciously long shadows were always there. I just didn't know where to look for them. I can see them everywhere now. They've replaced my crew. I used to find it annoying that they only spoke in a language I can't speak to one another. Now I long for the comfort of recognizing that it's Japanese. <sighs> recognizing that I'm audibly hearing it at all. Go Minnesai. <sighs> to my family and friends, I love you to the moon and back. <sighs> I'm sorry I'm not in the Mariana Trench. Do something with my savings. Make sure everyone brings a plate and enjoy yourselves. Well, you still can't. To those who have kept me company, you have reached me, and for that, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have ever reached back. It knows you now. It knows your fears, your guilt, your weaknesses. I've doomed you all. Please do not feel responsible for what is to come. Your words did nothing but ease my own guilt. And finally, to Dr. Newhart, wherever you are, <laughs> I couldn't have done this without you, and I only wish you hadn't left your work for me to finish. Ya um ya, ya from lat, see ya. You are experiencing what has happened, what is happening, what will happen. From the wells of the night to the gulfs of space, and from the gulfs of space to the wells of night. Praises to the mollusk titans, praise and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Yeah, the black goat of the woods. Yeah, the goat with a thousand young. Yeah, fall my sagen. Yeah, knife sagen. Yeah, ask soon. Yeah, dagu. Yeah, shag. Yeah, shag. Do you think this is a dream?
Dr. Olivia Mason, September 5th. Selection chosen. 